Bro, I used to get kicks out of hurting people. Me and my friends, every single time, would come up with a new torture device or a torture technique to try and get as much pain and damage delivered without killing the person. Because every single person that was in our crew was a fucking criminal. They'd be selling guns, they'd be selling drugs, they'd be fucking selling fake notes, they'd be fucking selling every single thing you could possibly fucking think of. Yeah, they, they would, we had our hands in every single fucking pot. So I've just cracked him one. A couple of the other guys that were standing next to him, I've just fucking laced him to them. Now, I didn't know how many people were behind me now. All I knew was these three people, I'm gonna fuck them up, I don't give a shit. Yeah, I mean, we're strong. We're, we're very, very strong, if anything. I would say within the last five years, we've pretty much doubled in numbers. But if you are gonna think even for even a slightest second that you're gonna get married in a Gurdwara with a non-Sikh, that wedding will be stopped. Situations like this where we step in because they couldn't find out anything. And within 48 hours, we managed to find out everything. The police have then found out that we found all this out. So they've obviously approached us and said, look, let us deal with this. We're gonna make some arrests. Just I need you guys and your boys to back down. Car cheese, why not have everything? Fresh dough, Italian tomato sauce, 100% mozzarella and unlimited toppings. All fast fired for 180 seconds. You can hardly go wrong. Fire away pizza, delivered straight to your door. Fire away pizza. Design, fire, eat. And for a 20% discount, use your KRN TV20 discount code. Link in description, guys. And a big thank you to the Lavish Lounge in Southall for letting us use their beautiful venue to do the interview. Yes, people, welcome back to Karen TV. Today, I'd like to be back with Ejection, Ship and Jab. Ejection, how are you doing, brother? Good, my bro. It's been a long time. Yes, it's years been now. two years. It's fine by then. Yeah. It's been a good two years. Bro, it's been a very rocky two years, I'll be honest with you. Um, but everything's, I mean, everything happens for a reason, right? So, um, this path that I took, I didn't take it um, thinking, oh, shit. This could happen, that could happen. I knew exactly what the, where this path was going to take me, and uh, I've just been ready for it from day one. So it is what it is. Of course, you definitely didn't take the easy route in life. You carried <laughs> no, on no. down that uh, no. path, yeah. helping people, sorting problems, getting yourself involved. It's non-stop and standing up for yeah. your religion and your race you know, all the time. And just sort of it's not just my religion, my race. It's it's the community. community yeah. So it doesn't matter what faith you're from. If there is someone that's out there that's being um, victimised, then uh, they get dealt with. Indeed. And um, have you become more diplomatic in the way that you solve, solve problems as time's gone on? Obviously your reputation carries a lot more force I'm sure than it did back then. So are you able to be more diplomatic and don't have to get your hands dirty? Can you sort a problem nowadays with public pressure, your sort of ways or do you still have to... Yeah, it's crazy you say that. the threat of violence that sort of makes them... No. So if I was... Um, if I was a nobody go down a lot harsher route to try and get people to understand that I'm in business. I think, I think my past, the person who I was before, has kind of mapped out, um, you know, made it easier for me for the future, right? And what's happened is, even though I don't really use anger anymore to get results, the capability is still there. I've still got it. A lion has always still got the capability of ripping someone's fucking head off. You understand? Um, you can train it up as much as you want. It will always have that capability there. And I think what I've just done is, over the years, I've learned that, you know what? We can't keep going down this route. Like, unfortunately, where we're living right now, London is probably got the most cameras in the world. I think it's the first or the second highest cameras or whatever, yeah? So you can't get away with shit. Going back, 30, 40 years ago, you could have fucking robbed a bank and no one would have known shit. Nowadays, you can't, you can't do anything without 
people so climbing. Just do the smallest thing and try to get away. Smallest thing. They've passes. got cameras on buses. They've got cameras outside of people's house. Ring doorbell is now is, is a savior in a way, but it's also for the criminals. It's the worst enemy. Um, you've got cameras everywhere. Then you've got all these traffic light cameras. You know, you just can't get away with anything. And so, I could easily have gone down that route of sticking to violence, and I could have just dealt with things the old school way. But one thing I've learned is. For me to stay on the road and for me to continue doing what I'm doing, I need to change my ways a little bit. And I can still stick it on people without having to physically touch them because they know what I'm capable of and they know that if they don't listen, then issues are going to be different. And like I said, with such a big platform that you've got, the public shame, I'm mm. sure, persuades a lot of people to do the right thing anyway because they know, yeah, like yeah. you say, what's going to come out after that. You build a reputation, you've got lots yeah. of powerful friends. And um, so I see you constantly sorting out issues every single week, anyone mm. that gets some problems. And um, I saw recently in the last week there's been the Hanzo incident. Um, have you managed to get to the bottom of that yet? Um, so, okay, let me explain to you. So a 65-year-old uh, Indian man, Asian man, um, was traveling through Hounslow at the time. Um, three four youths decided it would be a good idea to rob him. So they tried to... Um, take his bag or whatever, take his money, his watch or whatever it was, his phone. So they tried robbing him and he put up a bit of a struggle in the process, they've managed to knock his turban off. Um, now that obviously is a big thing, especially within the Sikh community, yeah? Um, when you're, and secondly, he's an elderly man, he's 65 years old. Do you understand? It, I mean, to be honest with you, it doesn't really matter what community you're from, it's wrong, full stop. But the fact where they've actually taken his turban off as well, and he's an old man, yeah? It just kind of, everything just went crazy. But. The surprising thing was, you had 48 hours. Within 48 hours, we had we managed to find the guys' addresses, their names, their pictures, everything, where they work or where they hang about, everything about these guys. But the police couldn't find any of this out. Now, you, going back on, you were talking about the cameras and all that, you know, it's got the highest cameras in, in pretty much the whole world. Then, to them, they could have found out just like that. But the bottom line is they ain't got the time. They, they can't be bothered because they think, oh, he's only a 65-year-old man. He didn't actually get robbed. Yeah, he was he, he was roughed up a little bit. He fell on the ground and, you know, they didn't get anything. That's they just were. That's for an old man. You understand what I'm saying? That's the person they should be taking Exactly. Care of so it's situations like this where we step in because they couldn't find out anything. And within 48 hours, we managed to find out everything. The police have then found out that we found all this out. So they've obviously approached us and said, look, let us deal with this. We're going to make some arrests. Just I need you guys and your boys to back down, which is fine. I said to them, you don't do what you got to do. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, at least there's some, something that's going on. But this is a prime example of how things happen in public, things happen in the community, and no one is dealing with these issues because to the police, they're too small. Do you understand? But for the person that's actually going through it, imagine his children, imagine his grandchildren coming home and they think, you know what, our dad is a 65-year-old religious man, he don't even say boo to a ghost, and he's come home and he's got his head, he's got his uh, turban um, uh, knocked off, he's got s scars in his head on his face, you know, he can't, you know, he's in pain, you know, and it's like, he's 65 years old. It's not like he's, I can understand if he's 20 or 30, you think, oh, he's, well, you'll get on with it. 65 year old man, and imagine what that family's gone through, but to the police, it's nothing. You understand? Now, fair enough, they, these guys, they're doing hard work, they're doing what they've got to do, I totally understand, but they need to understand that they need to make our life a little bit easier and do their work. If they'd done their work, we wouldn't be doing this. Especially what we're the doing. vulnerable, the old, and the young, and stuff like this. And then I saw there was another incident where the young boys said that people were out smoking the cigarettes. I didn't realize it was sacrilegious for a seat, but uh, mm. this was last week, the week before. And then the, the big group of them ended up sort of like they jumped the little young boys that had said to them about the vapes and the cigarettes. Because, oh yes, uh, yes. Did you manage to get the So that, that got sorted out as well. So Jimmy um, had a huge TikTok, wasn't it, stuff like this? Yeah. So um, there was a situation there where um, I didn't realise it's sacrilegious to smoke cigarettes as a Sikh, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and yeah, vapes? tobacco is um, banned within Sikhism, um, and then obviously. Uh, certain other religions, like for example Islam, it's allowed in Islam, but the, the alcohol is not allowed. So um, you know, every every religion's got their own their own ways. Of course. Did you manage to get the young boys the apology of the? Hello? So um, we found out what the issue was. Um, it was it wasn't a straightforward case. It was a bit complicated, but the bottom line is he got sorted. Of course, he got sorted. Well, that's the main. I don't reason. want to go too much into it.
But it well, was like I said, I take my hat off to you because, like I said, the communities are falling apart at the moment around yeah, yeah, yeah. So for you to try and do your good and try and yeah. help out, it's um, yeah. So uh, you're doing a good deed for sure. Um, and is the ship and jab still going strong? You still doing lots of work with them and sort of the local function of it. And Bro, was, or was it just a sort of, we are them? Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so um, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're strong. We're, we're very, very strong. If anything, I would say within the last five years, we've pretty much doubled in numbers. Um, we've got guys in all parts of London, north, east, south, west. Um, you've got Wales, you've got Kent, you've got Midlands, you've got up north, um, uh, Glasgow, Scotland, all these places and that, yeah. Um, they were pretty much covered. We've, we've even now started to, started to branch out to America, Canada. So we've got teams there set up and all we're doing is just basically helping them help the community. That's all it is. Yeah, but the people that are, you've got to understand, the people that are under this so-called umbrella, they're not your kind of average people. They're people that are staunch. You know, um, a lot of them are probably ex-criminals or maybe even still current criminals, but they're people that have still got morals, yeah? And they still think, okay, cool, what's happened is wrong. We're going to go and sort this out. Of course, it's sort of... Uh the strong people within your... Yes, 100%. And um, I know at certain times there's been, not conflict, but there's been sort of set divisions. So there's like the Birmingham sort of division that's quite a problem with yeah. Is there sort of, do you guys work together at all? Nah, they do their own thing. We do our own thing. Yeah, Indeed. they do our own thing. Our own thing. And uh, how are things in general in Southall and in the area, like post-COVID, is everyone struggling? If things are in a worse sort of state than what they were before? Or something? You know what, to be honest with you, um, I'll be straight up, it's probably not the answer you're expecting, but... When COVID hit, um, even afterwards, South was just carried on, mate. Like, one thing with Asians is they will just carry on. Through it. Yeah, mate. I'm telling you, there could be an atomic bomb go off. These guys will just carry on. So probably less impacted than most of the country. Yeah, yeah, they just, just carry on. The, the, the building work, the companies, everything, the restaurants, everything was just going on like normal. Cool. You know what I mean? It was crazy. Crazy. And um, obviously a bit of a different note. Last year, ended up seeing you get attacked. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk to us a little bit about why that happened and sort of how bad it was? Obviously, we see it didn't go down and there seemed like there was a big group of them. It seemed to come off too bad. So, let me tell you exactly where this whole situation started from. There was a married wife, married couple that owned a few shops and restaurants in Southall. And then there was another guy who was married with kids and everything, and he was from up Kent. The guy from Kent started having an affair with the woman from around these sides. They got caught. The, white, the guy from Kent, his wife caught them, made a video, publicly embarrassed them, and they were basically fucked. The, then, they thought, everything's out in the open, we're pretty much screwed. Let's fuck our partners off, and let's just get back to, get together. So what they've done is, he's kicked his wife out, taken over the, kid, uh, the house and the kids. She's kicked her husband out, and taking over the businesses and everything, because everything was on her name. So, the guy from Kent, he played a very dirty game, very money motivated man, yeah? So he's thinking, okay, I've got, a, I've got a hen that's laying golden eggs there, let me quickly nab that, right? So he's very cleverly brainwashed her, and um, he's made her sign everything over. They're now running the businesses together. These are the same businesses that her husband, had, spilt sweat and blood over just to get them running, you understand, yeah? And it got to a point where that same guy, he got kicked out, he was spending, he was sleeping on his friend's sofa, yeah? From, a, from having three, four businesses, three, four houses, who now sleeping on a sofa with his son, yeah? So when I found out about this, as soon as I found out, I made, made a public video, and I go, listen, this is bullshit, yeah? These people are carrying on like normal, running their businesses, this needs to be stopped, yeah? So they found out, they tried arranging a meeting a few times with uh, uh, middlemen, they tried going to the temple, to arrange meetings, speaking to people. I told them straight, I said, listen, fuck off. Yeah, it is what it is, right? So they've managed to see me on this one particular day where I was coming back from the gym. Now, you don't see me walking around with groups of guys. Yes, I've got a lot of friends, a hell of a lot of friends, and I've got a lot of people backing me, behind me, yeah? But when you see me on the streets, I'm always on my own. I'm doing my things on my own. I don't need people around me to get my things done, you understand? So I've come from the gym, I've popped my car down next to I thought, you know what, let me go and see my parents, right? 
walking down. As I'm walking down, these guys have pulled up in the car in front. As they pulled out, so I'm nodding my head, I said, okay, cool. You guys are here. You want to talk, yeah? Cool. No problem, right? As, I'm, as they've got out of the car, as I'm trying to talk to them, his dad come from behind and he's grabbed my beard. So he's come from behind me, but he's grabbed my beard from the front of that, yeah? I've turned around and he's grabbed it hard and he was, you could tell he's, he's had a few drinks, yeah? And um, so I've just cracked him one, yeah? I've done him. A couple of the other guys that were standing next to him, I've just fucking laced him to them. Now, I didn't know how many people were behind me now. All I knew was these three people, they're coming for me, I'm gonna fuck them up, I don't give a shit. I don't care how, how, how I'm gonna do it, but I am not getting taken down without taking someone down with me, yeah? And uh, in my head, that's me still winning, you understand? If I'd gone, if I'd gone, take, if I got taken down and they all walked away without a scratch, that's me got done. You yeah, I'm sure it would be but worse. I dealt with those three bad, right? And the other guys that were in the car, there was about five of them. So they'd obviously, by that time, they've all started jumping me from behind. One of the guys that I was there, um, it was his dad still. So I'm licking him up, licking him up, licking him up. He wouldn't let go of the beard. So he's dropped to the yeah. ground. What a fucking girl, he's had to, yeah. fucking So he, he dropped to the ground. All his weight now is on the ground, but he's hanging onto my beard. Yeah, which is why my beard at the time got a lot of it got ripped out. Yeah, um, as soon as the beard got ripped out and he let go, then I just started lacing into him properly. Yeah, started lacing to the other guys, and then um, everything just stopped. Everyone chipped. I'm like, cool. He sat down on the ground to get a breather, and out of nowhere, the fuckers started coming again at me. Yeah, so then I got up again. I was like, all right, cool, let's go. But I think what shocked them was this guy just can't be fucking taken down. And I've been known for this for a very long time. I can take a lot of licks. It's very hard to take me down. You understand? And so I think they've realized, they've checked, they've gone in their cars. And, um, and then obviously, I think there was one guy that was there. He was asking me what's happened. He's done a sneaking move. Yeah, yeah. And he's recorded it on video, yeah? But you can see in the video, I'm just covered in blood. Yeah, I don't think you were that bad because you don't have any people were there. I think you did yeah, fucking yeah. well. Anyone else is five or six people on you. My biggest injury was one of the guys, he tried taking my eye out. So he put his finger behind my eye and he was basically trying to take it out. But I knew, as soon as he put the finger in there, I knew what's going to happen because I've done it loads of times to people, yeah? So I just quickly pulled away. As I pulled away, he's basically, his uh, nails yeah, yeah. scratched this bit here, yeah? And um, so the swelling on the eye was purely because a guy tried to stick his finger in there. Um, but apart from that, I was okay in the sand. And that was the only reason why the blood was there as well. My nose, my lips, my head, everything was fine. No cuts, no nothing, yeah? It was just the eye. Um, then, times like that, you sort of benefit from all the training you've done over the years. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it? And then, um, so then I've uh, gone to the hospital. Ambulance has, has uh, turned up. They've taken me to the hospital because the police turned up. As soon as I've turned, uh, gone to the ambulance, uh, hospital, sorry, I hadn't even made myself comfortable in bed before the police officers turned up and he said to me, bro, he goes, there's about 60, 70 people outside. He goes, I don't know what to do. Are they your enemies or are they your friends, yeah? And um, I go, listen, they're gonna be my friends. I said, trust me, I know. So they've sent a couple of men and I think they were letting me in about five, six at a time and the police officer even said to me, bro, I've never seen this in my life. So that must make you feel good. Yeah, so Love he's you. like, look bro, he goes, you haven't even fully checked into the hospital yet. They've only literally just brought you, yeah, you have been doing your paperwork. And he goes, you've made no phone calls to anyone, and there's fucking 60, 70 people here already, like literally just like that, yeah? So, so the other it, yeah. put that, that slide video was the worst thing they could have done in yeah. terms of like, yeah, yeah, so it, it, it gave me a lot of like, confidence, a lot of, you know what I mean? It made me feel good that knowing I've got my brothers there, but I always knew that anyway. How much you know love you've got? I've got brothers, they, they sh my brothers show me so much love, man. This is why, you know, I have got to where I am today. People think, Okay, it's just because he's always been ruthless. It's not, man. My brothers, my family have shown me so much love. I guarantee you, if anything ever happened to me tomorrow, there'd be a fucking war. You understand? And, and this is why, like, we were talking before about when after, when I got jumped, yep. there's a lot of things happened afterwards. Yeah, of course. Like, like I said, I've heard rumours that there's been a few shootings and people have been badly hurt since then. Um, some of the people involved, even some of the families of the people involved. Um, mm -hmm confirm or deny and obviously I'm sure you don't know anything about what person happened you must have heard what's happened 
I can't really comment on that too much because um, I'm currently being investigated for that. Um, what I can say is, yes, somebody turned up at their houses or their premises, restaurants, people have been shot, um, premises have been shot, uh, front doors blown off, all sorts. Um, there's been a lot of things that have been happening and I've been getting the blame. Um, and to be honest with you, it probably has got something to do with from when I got jumped, right? But I've got no control over someone else's actions. If you tomorrow now say to me, you know what, bro, I'll show you so much love. If someone fucking says empty, I'm going to stick a knife in his neck. I'm not... It, I shouldn't go to prison because you've decided to stick yeah, a fucking knife in his neck. You understand what I'm saying? Like that, you know, you understand? That. And to be honest with you, I'll be honest with you, hands, hands on my heart, straight up, yeah? Saying it in front of the camera, yeah? This probably won't stop. They will probably carry on getting fucked for the next 20, 30, 40 years because there's a lot of enemies they've made from my side by doing what they did. The guy went back, he was crying to his missus, well, his ex-wife, sorry, saying, I fucked up, I don't know what I've done. He goes, we went there to talk. He goes, this ended up happening. He goes, they're gonna fucking kill me. They're gonna do this and that or whatever, yeah? Look, my path is simple. I help people, yeah? I'm not gonna do anything that's tomorrow that's gonna jeopardize my future and that's gonna send me into prison. Okay, but I cannot control what people in my circle are going to do. They show me a lot of love, they've always protected me, they've been willing to die for me from day one. You ask any of the people that in my circle, they'll say to you, this guy will fucking die for him. So there's a lot of people, a lot of fucking dangerous people that have been pissed by what's happened and they will get answers. There, there will be repercussions, there will be, that's without fail. And, but, I will have no, obviously, I will have no control of that. And so, so when things like this happen, you end up getting hurt. Does it make you second sort of guess the way you live in your life and how involved you are, or sure you just take it in your stride? Bro, there's been many, many occasions where things have happened, and um, I've, I've literally been to a point where my life is flashed in front of me, and I'm like, you know what, I'm gone. I think the last time we spoke about that time when I got um, chased by about 20 um, black kids and Somalians with knives, they were going to kill me. And to be honest with you, when I was there, I had the scaffolding pole in my hand and I'd already accepted that I'm gone today. I'm dead. But I told myself, there's no way I'm fucking going down without fucking at least one of these guys up, yeah? And so you come to that point where you sort of understand you like, it is what it is. Look, birth on, in, this, in this world is not even guaranteed, but there's one thing that's 100% guaranteed without fail, a million percent, and that's death. Every single person eventually will die, and when we're going to die, it's already pre-planned. Do you understand? The big man upstairs knows exactly when it's going to happen, whether it happens when we're at 60 years old, or whether we, it happens when we're at 16 years old. Do you understand? So, so you believe it's set out? It's, it's set. Thing? Yes, it's, 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 it, my faith teaches me that, yeah? yeah? And so, the way I see it is, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. But I'm not going to live my life in fear, thinking shit. If somebody says to you tomorrow, bro, in... Uh, 20 years to, or five, five years time you're going to die under a bus, yeah? You're not going to spend the rest of those five years now living your life in fear, thinking, shit, I can't even go on a bus again because I might die or, you know, staying away from public. Nah, just enjoy your life. If your time's up, it's up. There's nothing you can do about it. You understand? So I will keep doing what I've got to do. And there has been times where I've literally come to death's doors and I've turned, been turned back, you know? And it, it is what it is. Of course. And so, um, obviously in the past you were a reputation for incredible violence. Mm -hmm. um, is there any instance in the past where you feel like, looking back, you think, fuck it, I went too far there, and some people got real badly hurt, maybe a little bit too far, you don't really sort of worry about the punishment for the people in the room? See, okay, let me explain something to you. You'll probably have trouble believing this because the person that you see in front of you now is very different to the person that I was before. Bro, I used to get kicks out of hurting people. Me and my friends, every single time, would come up with a new torture device or a torture technique to try and get as much pain and damage delivered without killing the person. And this is what we've done, you understand? Every single day, that, that is how we made our money. We used to kidnap and torture people for a living. 
We used to every single thing that you could possibly think of that was crime related, we done. Because every single person that was under our umbrella was a criminal. But they were all criminals in different departments. So we had fucking 5,000 puzzles of pieces of this puzzle. Each one was a different crime. And if we ever needed this done, we knew where to go. If we need that done, we knew where to go. We needed to mix people up and connect them and get work done. It was a big organization. You understand? So when originally Sherry Punjab had started years ago, they were a an organization that was there to protect the community. And then what happened is they died down. Um, their problems got solved, everything calmed down, and in the Midlands, everything came to a halt, yeah? And then in 1997, we started it up in London, because then there was a lot of problems going on here at the moment, at the time, yeah? Where people were going around, yeah. and they were giving out leaflets, basically saying, Sikh women are the best women to convert, and if you want to convert them, this is how's the best way to do it. So it wasn't anything against any particular religion, it was just something that was going on wrong within the community that we had to um, correct. Yeah, and so we started up again in 1997. Then there was a lot of issues that started happening where, um, I think we had spoken about this before, but there was a lot of the youngsters, because they wanted these women to themselves to convert them, yeah? What they were doing is every club that they were going to in London, any gig, any student gigs or anything that was going on, anyone that walked in with a bangle, they'd fuck them up. They'd beat them so badly and it become known that anyone goes in there that's a Sikh with a bangle or with a tur uh, turban or butka, they get fucking dealt with. So what ended up happening is a lot of these people stopped going to these gigs, but the women were still going. Terrible. So it was an open market for these for these um, uh, criminals, these, these people that wanted these women for themselves, yeah? So they were thinking, okay, those our competition's not here. We're gonna fucking pull these birds. So what we started doing is we started doing exactly the same. We started going into these places, bro. We'd go into B&Q at that time. It's four ninety nine for a fucking mini axe, yeah. And it used to come with a PVC case, yeah, really nice one, right? Get the fucking axe, yeah, and it would fit right here, yeah. You, and we'd put it close to the crotch, yeah. So because that's where they never used to search. We'd go in, bro. We'd fucking chop everyone. I, I would go for the biggest fucker there. The biggest guy that was there, the biggest group, and I wouldn't even, we wouldn't even arrange it to my friends, and my friends will tell you this, we wouldn't arrange it and say, oh, okay, Rich, get ready, we're going to go, yeah? We wouldn't do any of that. We'd be standing there, everyone's having a good time, and then next thing you know, injections just shot off there, and you fucking guys are getting chopped up, and you just see a big fucking crowd and that, yeah? And then all my boys would jump in, and then they'll fucking, you know what I mean? Um, we'll deal with the guys, but we started going and doing this to all these guys, and then eventually they stopped as well. Then we were thinking, what do we do? How do we stop all this from, from happening? Like, we on, yeah. need to fucking go to the root of the problem. So then what we started doing is, we started talking to the event organizers and we told them, listen, from now on, you're not doing these events. Simple. And at first, a few people were like, yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever. They learned the hard way. They learned the hard way afterwards, yeah. Um, but then eventually the word got out and there was literally maybe one gig um, a year happening where before there'd be like three, four hundred there'd be one gig, and even that would be, there'd be undercover police there. You know what I'm saying? So we, we pretty much changed everything the way Shere Punjab was in London compared to how they were in the Midlands. We had become more of a criminal organization, a, a, a organized crime gang, because every single person that was in our crew was a fucking criminal. They'd be selling guns, they'd be selling drugs, They'd be fucking selling fake notes. They'd be fucking selling every single thing you could possibly fucking think of. Yeah, they, they would. We had our hands in every single fucking pie. You understand? But one thing is, hats off to those people. As much as they had done bad, making their living or whatever, but they were always there. They were always there for the right things. And um, in terms of Sikhs going out of bangles on and stuff like this, now obviously all that's done and the things mm. have calmed down a lot. Where they realise there's going to be consequences, and obviously mm. people could go out, go to parties, or go to yeah, dances yeah. without consequences now is that right yeah yeah now it's all fine bro it's all good and um obviously you're take people on their words you're a proper person in that there must be an instance where people have come to you and lied about what people have done in order for you to end up hurting people have you ever ended up hurting innocent people off the back of lies and then you end up having to deal with the people that lied to you and everything like this you know what majority of the times it's women women are the ones that I have to deal with majority majority of the time. 
when it comes to lies, yeah? So what they do is they won't tell me the exact story of what's happened. They will give me a sob story. They will come, they'll come see me. They'll start putting on the waterworks and they'll say, this is what's happened. And you know, uh, this guy's harassing us or uh, he's harassing our family or my ex-husband or my ex-partner or whatever, yeah? And then I'll find out there's another side to the story. You understand? But by that time, the fucking guy's already been dealt with, isn't it? So, um, it's difficult when it's, it's a woman. It's, it's to difficult, do you understand? And a few of the times I've actually gone up to the guys and I'm like, look, bro, I didn't know, innit? I do apologise. You know what yeah. I mean? I put my hands up, say straight up, I fucked up. Of course. You know what I mean? Um, but, you know, it is what it is. But people know that. But these people, they know that they sometimes some people can take manipulate advantage. the fuck, take advantage and, and change the fucking situation and to their advantage, do you understand? And, um, but I think what's happened now is over the years, I just don't get involved in personal issues now. Anything involving husbands, wives, um, uh, children, boyfriends, parents, I just don't get involved. Family stuff. I, yeah. I don't get involved. Because yeah. it, what happens is I've noticed is tomorrow they get back together and then we get fucked. Of course. And um, what's the worst, most dangerous sort of beef or feud you've been at certain point? Obviously, we know you've been uh, shot at certain points, but we don't know if the guy was a super serious force behind it or maybe he was a coward that just paid some people to come down. And no, do. no, he was definitely a coward. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, yeah. But, so that was the most dangerous. What's the most dangerous feud you've been in? And Bro. how did that get resolved? Fucking you know, hell, where do I start? I don't know. Bro, there's been so many. Every single thing that I've pretty much back, 60% of the things that we've dealt with over the years, they've been dangerous. Um, a lot of the people that you've got to remember, when we originally started, we went down this route, yeah? We weren't that established. Nobody even had fear for us. They were just like, these just are some fucking random guys or whatever. So people were proper giving it back, you know? As time's gone on, obviously the reputation's built up. People now think twice because they think, okay, if you fuck with him, you're going to get dealt with, you understand? But it's been a lot of, there has been a lot of, lot of issues um, uh, that have been serious. Even like when I got shot, the guys that actually paid to get me shot, they were such fucking cowards. They didn't even do it. We had originally a problem with them two years prior to that. What they done is they didn't do it then because they were so scared of us. They waited two years for yes, me to, to go. Yeah, for me to go to a wedding, smack some cunt up, and made it look like that guy got it done. Do you understand? Yeah. So yeah, that's basically what how these people work. And so you must have. Um Obviously, in the instant where you got involved and you end up getting jumped and go street on your own, you must have um, loads, hundreds of enemies and stuff. People who have got an issue with you, surely, where you've put yourself in the middle of a situation, resolved situation, you must have. But bro, I don't, I don't fucking walk the streets afraid, bro, because I know if someone's gonna try and come for me, they better be fucking ready, bro. Like that time, it took eight people, bro, to fucking try and jump me, and even then, I fucked up three of them. You understand? So it's going to need a lot more people to try and fucking do me. And look, look what's been happening to these guys afterwards. Yeah, fair enough, they've got a case put on me and that case has been going on for over a year now. The police have been, the police have been working with these. Look, I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to make my life awkward, which is totally fine. You can't carry on. But there is no evidence because I didn't do anything. Do you understand? You can't convict me for something that I haven't done. If people in my circle have gone and taken the law in their own hands, that's their choice. I'm not responsible for that. Of course. And um, you've obviously mentioned in the past the Shia Punjab, sort of a criminal organisation, but you yeah. yourself, you've obviously stepped away fully from the life of crime mm. um, and are completely legit now. Yeah. Correct? I, I stopped I stopped 10 years ago, bro. 10 years ago when my partner passed away, um, I made a promise to myself that I'm not going to make any money illegally. Um, I'm not going to go down that route and the, the criminal organised route, I'm not doing it. So it's something that she wanted. And I've stuck to that. Oh, so it was sort of in her memory that you've yeah, done that yeah. and stayed away from it. Yeah. Know? And um, but the funniest thing is, and this will probably answer a lot of questions. Even though I had stopped, there was so much fucking anger and aggression inside me. You imagine that, right? Imagine a lion that spent his whole life just ripping fucking heads off, right? And then literally overnight, he's had to just stop. You can imagine this frustration and the tension getting built up. So I had to do something about that, which is why I've gone down this route to helping people because I'm letting out that frustration, I'm letting out that anger, but I'm doing it for the right cause. Yeah, in a positive way, doing 100%. all the right sort of things. And so in terms of work and stuff like this at the moment, you're doing all right for work, involved in certain businesses, and um, 
let's not talk about my personal life like that. <laughs> of course. Yeah, I'm uh, just uh, I'm just helping the community at the moment. Of course, and um, obviously you look like you're in great shape. You're still flat out training, goes back to yeah, saying. Yeah. And um, obviously, name like injection, you make no secret of the fact that you've done steroids in the past, all this sort of stuff. Mm. Do you still do steroids? Well, I stopped ten years ago. You stopped. So what you see now in front of you um, is 100% natural. The only thing that I take is TRT, um, which is TRT is basically the only thing with that is it makes your test levels as if you were when you were 18, 19, 20 year old. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So um, if that's what your class is taking still, so then, yeah. Tiny that's all it is. I'm just increasing my test test levels to how I was when I was in my teens and I'm just training. I don't take no proteins, I don't take no aminos, I don't take no supplements. I just train, I eat shit, I eat loads of, of shit yeah, and I just train hard. And obviously, where you've done so much steroids in the past, they can, that can impact your normal testosterone, isn't it? So that's obviously um, it I've always that. done it in a safe place, a safe way, should I say. Um, always done it in a safe way. A lot of people have abused it. I've, I've always done PCT courses afterwards to make sure everything is functioning wherever it should be functioning. Um, you know, I've got, I've got two beautiful kids, you know, and um, so everything's fine in, in down there, like that way, like even with size wise, you only keep the size for a, up to six months maximum and even after six months it's out of your system it you get traces of it very minor traces of it in your system for up to two years but the main effects of steroids only stay in your system for up to six six months so you can imagine it's been 10 years bro, over 10 years since i've been doing this and those steroids are totally out of my system so everything you see now is 100 percent natural like i talk about people talk about this to people in the gym where I say to him, I'm a 42 year old man. Yeah, 42 year old man, over 120 kilos. I can do 20 pull ups. I can do 320 kilos on bench press. Fucking I can man. do 800 kilos on fucking leg press. I can do full stack triceps. Yeah, triceps stack on the pulley machine, 52 reps. Yeah, I can do dips my whole body and I'm weighing 120 kilos, 50 reps. So you tell me how many people do you know at that weight, at that age, that can still lift that much weight? Yeah, fair play to you. And obviously, I see the um, on the, the punch machine the other day, yeah, bro, yeah. and you got some whack on you. Bro, as well the, 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 the guy just... that owns the machine turned around and said to me, he "Goes, bro, he goes, you're definitely the punch you've got." He goes, "I've never seen a, even a heavyweight ever punch a professional heavyweight. I've never seen a professional heavyweight punch that hard." Dude, fair play to you. Mm. Um, this one's a bit of a sensitive topic within the sort of community. Um, we sort of touched on it last time. This sort of different. It's uh, the mixed marriages, um, no, I mean, religious marriages no. or race marriages. Yeah. Um, what's your opinion and uh, are you all right with it? Do you, we, we touched it slightly last time. So if Sikh marries a Muslim or a Sikh girl marries a Muslim. I'm assuming you're bringing this up because of obviously all the reports, the news reports and Absolutely. all the social media stuff that's been going out there, right? Of course. So, okay. So ourselves and also other organizations around Sikh organizations um, that have been trying to stop these mixed marriages um, in religious places of worship. Okay? Look, my personal opinion, I don't speak for anyone else. I don't give a fuck who these people get married to. They get married to fucking donkeys for all I care. I don't give a shit. But if you're going to do it in a place of worship where that place of worship is saying this is forbidden, you're going against them. Like, Imagine like, for example, for the English community, I think it's the Vatican, which is um, the That's highest church, throne. Yeah. yeah, once they say something, is done. There's no arguing about it, right? Yeah? yeah. So for us, is the Akal Takht. Yeah? The Akal Takht, which is in, in the Golden Temple in India, right? When they make a decision, it's final. Every single Sikh temple over the world has to accept that decision. They made a decision many years ago that it is wrong for a non-Sikh to get married in the temple. Understandably, it's yeah. completely normal. Like I said, whatever people choose to marry, I completely yeah. believe this as well. It's like you're not going to go to a church and a Muslim get married in a church. It doesn't you don't. Make sense. It don't make sense. A Muslim isn't going to get married in a church and just like, and just like a, a Christian is not going to get, get married in a mosque. Or a you understand? Yes. Because you're going to go in there and you're going to do the religious vows. Yeah, you're going to do those religious vows, but when those religious vows mean diddly squat to you, 
What is the p- point of that? Yeah, I don't understand. Like paper it's written on, is it? Yeah. It's, done that like, so, it's just uh, gibberish. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's like someone talking to me in Chinese. And I'm like, oh yeah, whatever. You know what I mean? So who's given it? Like you said, in India, the, the number one temple government. The Golden, the golden yeah. Temple, yeah. Um, they've obviously said that it's not allowed. Yeah. So who's green it and why is so it happening? We, they, we've been trying to stop it for the is last... people trying to be greedy? Just let that's them... what it is, bro. Yeah. That's what it is. That's so terrible. We've been trying to stop it for the last 20 years or so. And then what happened is when a few certain people, like myself and other people, um, I'm not going to mention their names, these guys have played a huge part in um, stopping these, yeah? And um, so these guys, after arranging, having meetings with the local Sikh temples, even especially Southall Temple, which is the biggest one around it, all the temples in England, they pretty much look up to these guys, yeah? yeah? So we sat down with them all, we had a meeting with all the other temples, and it was decided that they are going to stick to the decision made by the Golden Temple, by the Akhartak, and they will have to stick to it. Otherwise, how can you call yourself a good a place of worship if you're not abiding by those rules? Yeah. But they stuck to them, and then now what's happened is in so the last the South of one they stuck to them. Yes, this was right. about eight years ago. Yeah. In the last one year or so, a lot of them have started doing it again. A lot of them. You've got one in Leamington Spa. Leamington Spa. That's probably the worst temple there. Um, you know, the, the committee there. They think they organised crime gang. Yeah. Um, you've got a few other ones in Bedford and a few other places where they've been doing that, right? And we've been turning up. They've been basically calling the police on us. Uh, there was only one the other day happened. About 50 guys turned up at the temple and um, Leamington Spa, I think it was, and they basically got nicked. They removed all their swords. That swords on them. They said basically you've come here to um, uh, cause violence. But hold on, you've got Sikhs that wear carry swords and they've come to that place of their own worship. To make sure things so are done correctly. The how can these saying? people argue, yeah. you sit down and have a normal conversation, it's a religious place, how can they argue yeah. that it's right in any way? You yeah, know? so, so th- there's been a lot of issues, but look, my message to anyone that's watching this, and I'm gonna say this straight, yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk direct to the camera now, yeah? If you're thinking of getting a mixed marriage, do what you gotta do. But if you are gonna think even for even the slightest second that you're going to get married in a Gurdwara with a non-Sikh, that wedding will be stopped. Okay? Now, I will suggest is if you guys want that special day in your life to go ahead and be special without any complications, then do the registry, get married where he or the other, she or the opposite party wants to get married, but just don't do it in a Gurdwara. Okay, because if you do, then you, we will, you will be bumping into myself and you will be bumping into my brothers. Simple. Of course, fair play if you're taking the stand. Like I say, you don't see it in the church or mosque. They would have yeah, yeah. So you need to stand up for your well, community so it doesn't become something that's completely normal in 20 years' time. If you, if, you were, if, if you were to put this up, I guarantee you, you're going to get a million comments underneath people just chatting bare fucking shit. Why? You're what's wrong with that? Right. So you know, if it's yeah. a non-religious marriage, you go yeah. down the registry and do it like don't that. It. Where it's just yeah. a piece of paper, the certificate, you know something like this. But it's void if you do it in any sort of religious house, whether it's the church, it's the a mosque, or the gurdwara. But nobody's stopping anyone from getting married to someone from a different faith. You can do that, but don't do it in a place of worship where it's banned. Of course. You understand what I'm saying? Of course. Like, no fair play to take my hat off for that. And another thing, touching back on the crime thing, like so if you stepped away from it ten years ago, but you're someone who's incredibly capable, got a big gang around you. Mm-hmm. And call it gang or your boys family. or family. Um, how do you stay away from the temptations? There must be temptations to get back involved in crime and certain man, even if it's for the money, like you said, you're doing all the problem solving stuff. There must be easy opportunities for you to well, take Since I've taken stuff. this path, my life has got a lot better. I'll be honest with you. My struggles have gone. So they're not just not there anymore. My struggles have literally gone. You know, they're non existent, they're not there. And before to me, it was the norm. So having struggles in life was the norm, you know? And when you're going down that path, you just, we're humans in it, right? Humans, they've got the gift to adapt to any situation. And then what happens is when you're going down this particular path, you eventually start adapting to any, it becomes the norm. And then I didn't know what a normal life was like until I started changing my ways. In the last 10 years, it's been, it's been crazy. And yes, you will get a lot of haters. That's normal and you will see this you have people commenting and saying, oh, he's a pussy, I know, he won't this and that, be. Bro, every single person, I'm gonna make this clear, 
every single person that is hating on me, I've either fucked them up over the years or I've fucked up one of their family members. I'm telling you this now, yeah? So that shows to you how many people are fucking dealt with over the years. I used to walk into a place and I'd fucking knock at 10 people and I'd walk out, you know? So these people, they're all haters, but they're haters not because they think, oh, now why would you hate someone that's doing good for the community? You can't. There's no reason for you to hate them, innit? You need, people like that, really. you need people like that. Tomorrow, if, if it's your dad that fucking gets knocked to the ground and, and gets robbed, who are you going to go to when the police are not doing anything? You're going to come to me. I've had people that have been slagging me off behind my back. And then three months later, they message me and say, we need your help. And I'm like, listen, fuck off, you cunt. Read your previous messages. You're fucking chatting shit to me, you prick. You know what I mean? So people get brave. But then when they need the help, then they come fucking begging, you understand? But every single person over the years, you've seen all the enemies that I've made, these people, they can't come up to me and have it. So what they do is they sit there behind their fucking little keyboards and they're pressing buttons, that's all they do. That's all they can do. Yeah, we ignore them. Like I said, you're still here, representing. I'm still here, but I'm still carrying on my shit. And like I said, I think um, in Britain, we've really lost a sense of community. Mm. Where neighbours don't even know their neighbours wouldn't even help them, let alone talk to them. So it's just all be lost. So for you to be still doing that and looking mm. out for it, I take your hat off because you could be doing stuff that just be selfish and looking out for yourself. Mm. But, um, and generally, what does the future hold for injection then? And what are your plans? What are your goals? Well, I'm just going with the flow, man. I'm having so many business opportunities come my way. Um, people left, right, and center saying, We're going to make you ambassador for this and that, or that, or whatever. Um, people have asked me to promote their bits and bobs, new businesses and all that. Um, I've had People mentioning we want to write a book, we want to do documentaries. Uh, to be honest with you, bro, definitely do a book. I've just been fucking you definitely do a book, bro. Yeah, bro. I just, I just can't be asked, man. It's just like the last get someone to ghostwrite it, so you could do yeah, read it all to them and just do all the twenty hours or something. But the book would be, but it's just sitting there and going through that all over again. Like, look, bro, we've done the last documentaries, the one we've done um, with, um, I forgot what it was called. Um, when they've done the 13 documentaries yeah, in the GV, yeah. Some of them was in the car show. Yeah. I watched all them, something Bro, the they've all been taken off. Have they? Why? Some of them had over a million views. They've taken the whole fucking lot because... Off. They got pressure or...? Uh, the government probably, whatever, YouTube, because what's happened is in there, I'm talking about everything, bro. About how we were doing surveillance. And now you tell me, have you ever heard of this? We were doing surveillance on the police while they were doing surveillance on us. It's they didn't surveillance. know. It's kind of surveillance. Do you understand? They didn't know we were doing surveillance on them. They were thinking they were doing surveillance on us and they're watching us. Little did they know we had their fucking rooms bugged. Fucking you know what I mean? And this was all brought up in those documentaries. We were talks about how when I was in prison and you know what the governors, the, 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 how they used to look after us. You know, bro, like everyone would be locked up 23 hour bang up. We'd be out to about 9, 10 o'clock. The governor used to come himself, open the door, lock us in his fucking office and say, make all the fucking calls you want, do whatever you want to do. Yes, yeah, so touching the prison stuff, we had that you had you had the running of the prison in Sandberg, which is, uh, it sounds like some crazy stories in there. Mm. Um, obviously, I'm sure you were committing some violence in there. And obviously, we, obviously, I know you had the running of it, but you were sort of doing stuff there. Obviously, well, we had it on lock. So, um, it all originally started off in... 2002 or 2001, I think it was, yeah? And at that time, Wormwood Scrubs was being investigated for violence on inmates. And I don't know how much you know, but prior to that, prison was known that you can't fuck around there, that the, the officers would fucking deal with you. You got mouthy with any of the officers. Whatever happens between the prisons, prisoners is different. But you get Larry with the fucking prison officers, they will fucking deal with you. They'll take you in a cell, they will all come in there and they will just fucking smash you in, yeah? And that's what used to happen a lot. And then I think one person died at the time. Um, they started getting investigated and it was just too much pressure from the top. So everyone was on good behavior. But you've got to remember, these are the same officers that have spent their whole career in that facility dealing with people yeah, and now they've been told, zip it, you can't do shit. So they get frustrated. You've got people coming on the hot plates and saying, oh, I don't want this fucking meal. And they're like, listen, mate, you ain't put your number down. You're supposed to put your number down at least a week before choose what menu is. If you haven't chosen it, you're getting standard meal, which is number five. And the standard meal was always like something like peas and mash and fucking sausage. Just like, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So they'd fucking lock the dishes at the fucking offices. And the officers would be covered in food and they'd be pissed. They can't do nothing. You understand? Then they'd come up to us, 
Now, some people would say, bro, that's wrong, isn't it? Because you're helping the screws. Nah, we weren't helping the screws. We were paid fucking help. We were paid vigilantes. You know, we, were doing, we were doing next level shit. So to me, it was a job. Yeah. And someone was fucking helping me and they were giving us perks. They were looking after us. In return, we'd go up in their cells. And at that time, the only two weapons that you had was glass of uh, jug of hot water, boiling water with sugar in it. We had, we had razor blades that would pop off, yeah, and we'd take the blades out and melt them onto toothbrushes, yeah. And a lot of times we'd stick two two uh, razors on at uh, the uh, same time, so then when you cut them, it doesn't heal up so quick. The, the other option was in Kona chili sauce bottles. So they were the only things that we had that were coming in on the canteen, which was glass. So we'd just basically just go into one of the cells, a couple of officers will make sure that there's no officer on the landing at the time. We we'll go inside. One guy will put a pillow on the fucking guy's head, just fucking stab him up in his fucking neck, yeah, and just chip. You know, I mean, literally. And everyone in the fucking wing, everyone in the fucking prison knew what the fuck was going on, but no one said anything because who are they going to complain to? The screws. But the screws been on it. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's like you're working hand in hand with them, yeah. Right? Well, but we had PlayStation at this time. They didn't have no Playstations in ourselves. That time there was no places. You barely had a fucking TV that had free view on it. If you're lucky. Like in one wing, you'd have one TV that's got a fucking teletext. You know, there used to be teletext back in the days, yeah, yeah? Yeah, yeah? You'd have one TV on the whole wing that had a fucking teletext remote, yeah? The rest of them were just normal. And then we had a PlayStation, we had a VCR in there, so we'd fucking record EastEnders while we're on the server, you come back and watch it, you know what I mean? So these little things, they make a difference. It's fucking hell, it's absolutely the same. I hope you don't go back to prison anytime soon, no, it sounds like you had an easy not. enough time when you're there. But um, obviously, we know in the past, like I said, when you've been in prison, generally you committed crazy amount of violence over the years. Mm. You touched on in the past, you enjoyed the violence. Do you still enjoy violence and crave violence these days? I don't. You know what it is, is sometimes I have these moments and I'll be honest with you, a lot of, uh, a lot that's helped me is my faith. So I, when I start getting frustrated and I start going down that route of where I've got that grey cloud on my head, I start listening to religious prayers and it helps me relax, it keeps me calm. Um, that's pretty much what helps, I'll be honest with you. Um, but in time, I have learned to start controlling it. I've learned to start managing it. I know certain things that trigger it. And yeah, sometimes you have good days, you have bad days. It's normal. You know, you, like last couple of days, I've just been fucking losing it, you know? Um, and and in, in London, living in London, especially with road rage and everything, it's the worst. You, you are going to kick off because everyone's just so fast to get everywhere. You know, and everyone's so taking stress out, yeah. it sort of rubs off, doesn't it? You understand? So it's energy. It's like you're fucking in a traffic jam with about 200 cars, everyone's pissed. And you've got 200 fucking negative energies fucking there in one little fucking traffic jam, you know what I mean? So yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna brush off. Yeah, you've got to fight against it all the time. But you seem like you're in a really good place at the moment. Like I said, you're doing really well business-wise. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you don't need to talk about any sort of specifics, but are you happy in your personal life at the moment? Is that all right? Obviously very Family well. and Very, very. There's nothing in my life that I can say right now I'm stressed about. Everything in my life is comfortable. There's no stresses at all. Friends, family, loved ones, finances, health, everything is just perfect. Well, it's fair play to you, hopefully long may that continue. Mm. But um, obviously I'd like to massively thank you again for the opportunity today, I think we've done just shy of an hour now, and hopefully we can do a part three down yeah, the line, yeah, hopefully it won't be such a long just break. Just give, like, give it a couple of years, boy. No. You've got, you got to give some material. It won't be such a big break because I've just been on madness myself, though. Yeah. But um, is there any sort of shout outs or anything you want to give to any of your friends, your family, your brothers? Mm -hmm. uh, Bro, look, all I'm going to say is thank you to everyone. Not just my friends and family, but even to the public. Because if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be able to do the shit that that we're doing today. Like the other day, we had the issue in Hounslow. I put up one post and I must have had about 500 messages. 500 messages from people with information. And all of this is down to you guys. When uh, I got jumped last year, I must have had about 15,000 messages from people saying, bro, we're ready. We have had women messaging me saying, buddy, we're ready. You tell us, we're ready to go. Like, this is the amount of love that you lot show me. I cannot ask for more. All I can say is just keep having faith in me and I promise you I won't disappoint you guys, yeah? Of course. And so anyone who's not following him on social media, crazy, what are your social media? Is? So my social media is injection, as in the medical injection, dot, Punjab. that's S-H-E-R-E, 
P U N J A B. Okay, uh, that's on TikTok, that's on um, YouTube, that is also on Instagram as well. Uh, guys, and Facebook. Yeah, that will be uh, the link for all of them will be in the description box below this video. So open that up and start following them. And then finally, have you got a message for the Sikh? community locally or Sikh community in general and then your local community? Guys, not just the Sikh community, I'm going to say this to all the local communities around here. Um, guys, you need to fix up your shit. Um, it was only the other day when that video came out in Hounslow where um, the elderly man was being jumped and you can see in the video a young fella was perfectly capable of stopping this, came outside, he was on the phone, he's watched the whole thing while he's like this on the phone, yeah, and then when he's realised that they might come towards him a little bit, yeah? He's run inside, he's hid. But then when the English community from that pub have gone running outside to help this old man, these, these cowards now, this fucking coward that was on his phone, he's come out making it out as if like, oh shit, what's happened? I'm here to help because there was numbers there. But when he was on his own, he was a coward. So this is what I'm trying to say to you guys. Look guys, fix up. Tomorrow it could be your father, it could be any members of your family that are in trouble. I cannot keep doing what I'm doing on my own. You understand? I'm not a fucking one-man army. I'm, I'm not going to be around forever. Maybe maybe have got another five years to live, maybe another 20 years to live, I don't know. But I can only keep doing this for about another five years and eventually I'm going to have to stop. But I need you guys to understand that, look, you need to make sure that your lot's shit is in order. Do you understand? The community, your circle, yeah, is solid. Yeah, if the people in your circle are solid, then, only then, you can start working outside the circle. But before that, you need to work on your own circle. That's a great message for all the communities to follow, you know. Like I said, uh, there's too many cowards these days who are not helping the weak, and when they see bad stuff happening, get involved, sort it out. Whatever religion you're from, whatever community you're yeah. from. So, um, yeah, objection, nice one, brother. Thanks no, everyone for tuning in, and um, yeah, till next time. Thank you. Very Cutches, why not have everything? Fresh dough, Italian tomato sauce, 100% mozzarella and unlimited toppings. All fast fired for 180 seconds, you can hardly go wrong. Fireway Pizza, delivered straight to your door. Fireway Pizza, design, fire, eat. And for a 20% discount, use your KRMTV20 discount code. Link in description, guys.